One of the important aspects of DFD diagrams is top-down approach. We can start to understand the diagram progressively. We can understand the system by a very simple diagram. After that, we can add details to these diagrams. And by the time, we can understand all the system. How we can do that? At the first, we represent all the system with only one process. This diagram, we call it the context diagram. In the context diagram, we can understand the context in which the system exists. So we can see the system as one process and we can see all the external entities with which the system exchange data. So when we when we look into this diagram, we can understand the context in which the system lives. We saw an example in the previous part of the lecture. So, in the top-down approach, each process can be exploded. It can, we can break down the M1 process into many processes, but we start with the context diagram in which the system is represented by one process. It is the highest level of the representation. After that, we talk about zero level. In zero level, what happened? We can see the main processes and the main data store. We can see the main processes and the main data stores in the system beside the external entities. So all what we see in the context diagram, we can see it also in the level zero. We can see all the external entities. We can see all the arrows that represent the input and output of the system. But we can see instead of one process, we can see many processes and we can see the main data stores in the system and with, with this approach, we can, at the first level, we can uh, concentrate on the external communication between the system and the environment. In the zero level system, we can concentrate on the internal data exchange in the system. At first, we have the context level, then we have level zero. After that, when we know the main processes of the system, we can have a specific diagram for each process that details the functions and sub-functions and sub-data stores that we can use in this process. So at the third level, we have for each process, we have a specific diagram. But this step can be repeated. So in the third step, I can see a diagram for each main process. This diagram may contain many sub-processes. If I need, I can also have a specific diagram for each sub-process. And it is a recursive step, so I can repeat it regarding the size of the system. If I have a very huge system, I can repeat this step as much as I need. We will develop our example because in the previous part of the lecture, we talked about a representation of the connected home. And we represent at the first the home. At the first, we represent the system with one process. Now, what we should do, we will try to go to level zero. How we go to it, we should break down this process. We should break down this process and we should see the main processes of the system. So DFD zero, it is the breaking down of the context diagram can include up to nine process. If we have more than nine process, we can make them in two levels. Each process is <laughs> numbered 
<coughs> sorry each process is numbered so we should have a number for each process it contains the main data stores so the D dfd it should contain the main data stores all external entities and data flows from the context diagram are included be careful not to confuse process zero with level zero so be careful not to confuse process zero with level zero in level zero processes start from one two three four so we don't have number zero what is process number zero process number zero it is here it is all the system so we don't see it in the level zero we see it in the context in the highest level so we should pay attention because there is difference we should not confuse level zero with process zero level zero it is the second level process zero it is the highest process it is in the context level in this one how we will go from context level to level zero we will take this example we will try to break down this process we have an idea about our system because we said before that what happened in our system in the connected home we receive data from the environment we try to treat a little bit locally this data we try to store it in the system we try to present it to the user so we will try to break this process we can say that we have an event registration because there is two types of parameters as we saw before there is state parameters to know if the door is open or it is closed for example there is another type of uh, parameter that we measure it is the temperature for example of the humidity or the humidity it is a number we have also the index of consumption we have the meter reading but meter reading is not enough because we need to to uh, to calculate the consumption we need further a process so event registration it takes the value from the door or from the window from the sensor on the door or in the window and it can read also the index every time when there is one liter when we consume one liter there is an event and we send a signal to the event registration and this process what will do, what uh, it does it sends the value the reading into the uh, store for this season we called this arrow reading and we called the store data store d1 readings we pay attention to add the s letter we have another process it is parameter correction because when we read some value from the nature for example we should convert it we read it in binary from the sensor and we should make some adaptation with the system we should verify that the value is correct and we should change also the value to be adapted with the human this process may put the data in a data store we can call it d2 it is for values for indoor uh, environment values and we put a value in this data store and the data store is called values with s we need a third operation to calculate the consumption because when we read for example the events when we see that there is only uh, when we read the index of consumption when we read the value of the uh, electrical meter it is not enough to calculate the consumption to calculate the consumption we need to know the duration and we should calculate the difference between the first 
index and the second index of consumption and sometimes we need the price so it is a complex question for this reason we need a, a, a process or a function to read these values and to calculate them so this process can read and can calculate usually in data flow diagrams we will not see data flow with question mark but to, it is uh, merely to uh, facilitate the understanding we need as we saw an operation to facilitate the communication with user we see in the previous lecture that the user with in the connected home will communicate with some applications to facilitate the communication to better show the results so we can say that we have an operation it is communication what is the goal of this operation what is the goal of this function the goal is to communicate with the inhabitant or with the researcher so will the results of the consumption will be sent to this process and this process will be able also to read the uh, the readings of the states and it should read the value of the temperature and the humidity and other indoor parameters and should be able to communicate with the users of the system with the external entities of the system in such way we see how we can break one one process so we broke the first process the main process of the system to create level zero but we can do the the same thing with each of these processes to create what we call child diagram of each process if we go to the functional tree we have a very simple example regarding our connected home we can see all the processes that we developed till now usually there is many levels but it is to simplify the example we have connected home system we, ha we have first process it is event registration Re second is parameter correction consumption calculation the fourth is communication we can see that it matches very well with dfd and we can have we can from this diagram have a global idea about all the processes of the system it, it can group all these levels we can see the first level we can see the context level the zero level and the other levels the what we can say the children but in the dfd files we will have in the further levels in in the bottom in low level we will see only one process for one diagram for each process but in the dfd we will see one diagram for one child we cannot see the correlation with all of the system what are the child diagrams so each process in diagram zero may be broken down to create a corresponding child diagram so in child diagram we have one diagram for each child for each process this diagram takes the number of the parents process so it takes the number the number of the diagram is related to the number of the process all data flow into or out of the parent process must be shown flowing into or out of the child diagram so all what we see regarding the interaction between the process and the outer and environment we should see it in the child diagram it cannot produce output or receive input that the parent process do does not also produce or receives usually it it have the main it has the main connection as the point but we can add some data source we can add some error messages also